This becomes very plain, okay. but using the kanaswar, it becomes <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Wait, is this your this your first time here? Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought I knew you. I thought you were one of my subscribers. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber, cons consider subscribing or whatever <laughs> anyway let's start over hi i'm h of the stage and i'm a vocal coach and a musician and i've been reacting to indian songs indian classical songs modern indian songs in the last i would say year or so and one musical term that was often used was rock or that way of singing that kind of structure of melody i'm not really sure ever since i did my first reactions to indian music i always wanted to learn more about rocks and you've left me some links to check out and this is one of them so i thought it would be interesting to you know check it out together with you kind of do a reaction but at the same time make it about learning because rock is well basically it's still a pretty new thing to me i understand it a bit but it feels like I I still can't talk about it, you know, being completely sure as I can talk about some other things. So I thought this would be a cool video to do together. So without further ado, let's go check it out. Let's try to learn something new. And remember to leave comments, explain things that I may be misunderstand in this video. And let's just see where this takes us. So this is Anuja Kamat explaining what is a rock. <laughs> Well, this was an attempt of mine in singing Rag Bhairav. Uh, many of you all might be having this doubt. What exactly is a Rag? Hmm, why don't we take this <laughs> up today? Well, then welcome to this episode of the Basic Theory of Indian Music with me, Anuja Kamath. One thing that I know is that, you know, rags are slides, kind of sliding from one People note to another. Who are watching this but there are some today, kind of rules there. Many of you all might be acquainted to Indian classical music. Many might not be. But I'm sure that each and every one of you all must have heard this term rag at least once in their lifetime. I love well, how she pronounces it. Is really I love her unique to Indian classical music and it forms its backbone. Okay. In Hindustani, it is called as rag. In Carnatic, it is called as ragam. And many people also call it raga, which is actually an anglicized version of the term rag. But it all boils down to, or it all means the same thing. Now, coming back to the question what is rag? Well, in the simplest terms, rag means a melody which is used to express a feeling. So, rag is a melody used to express a feeling. So far, if I were just to hear that ex explanation, it wouldn't mean too much to me because basically every melody in its nature kind of explains a expresses some sort of feeling, or at least it should. If it's not just you know a solfeggio or you know just a exercise where you just practice intervals without thinking about anything too much, without you know involving yourself emotionally, but there's more to rock than just that. Now you will ask, what is a melody? Melody is a ear-pleasing combination of musical notes. But mind you that a rag is not a very random combination or a random melody. To understand the concept of rag, you will have to understand the three layers which form a rag or the three steps in the formation of a rag. Okay. The first step is understanding that rag is a set of notes arranged in an ascending and a descending order. Okay, so rag is a set of notes you know a melody that is set in particular intervals that's what i could gather even from listening to it and from some information that i gather from some of my patreon friends so it's a set of rules that describes a melody going upwards and downwards but there are different kind of rocks i've reacted to rock being palassi and some other kind of rock so let's see what's the difference between them and let's just learn more the ascending order is called as aroha while the descending order is called as avroha there have to be minimum five notes in the ascending and five in the descending. Okay. The number of notes in a rag determine what we call as the jati of the rag. Jati. So if there are five notes in the ascending and five in the descending, the rag is what we call as odav odav jati rag. Odav means five. Odav. The example of odav odav jati rag is uh, the rag bhup, 
which Ooh. has five notes in ascending, five in descending. Sare ga pa dha sa, all original notes. Sare ga pa dha sa, sa dha pa ga re sa. Ah, that sounds so cute. <laughs> That's like, I don't know, a solmization, but Indian solmization. So, this forms very interesting. This forms the set of rag bhup. If there are six notes in the ascending Boop. and six in descending, it is called as shadav shadav jati rag. Shadav, and if there are seven shadav. notes in the ascending and descending, then it is called as sampurna sampurna or uh, just sampurna jati rag. Sampurna. Now, interestingly, there are some rag... It's very hard to pronounce your words, Indians. I mean, I really like the way it sounds. I really love it. it I really like your culture. It's, it's so colorful. It's so beautiful. The food, the music, you know, everything. And you just feel like very warm people. But your language, man, for foreigners, so hard to pronounce. It's have a mixed jati. Like they have five notes in ascending and seven notes while descending. So mm -hmm. it's called as... Odav Sampurna Jati Rag. Well, similarly, many have five notes while ascending and uh, six notes while descending. So mixture. Making it, it doesn't Odav have to be Shadav Jati the same Rag. Number. And so on and so forth. Okay. A rag is formed by the combination of um, the notes in this set. And while singing one rag, you cannot use the notes beyond this set. You have to use only the notes from this set. If you use yeah. something... I which is not in this set, this then you will uh, be breaking the rules of the rag, which is not at all accepted. <laughs> now, so basically, singing rags is very traditional. And as everything traditional, you don't want to mess around with it. You just want to make it as it's intended, you know. And in rags, apparently, you have some set of rules and some set of following certain notes. And every rag is different. But if you're singing, let's say, rag in Palasi, you, you can't go on and sing some different rag, you know, borrow notes from different rag and mix it out with bin Palasi because that would be probably sacrilegious. <laughs> that is very sacrilegious. Now comes step number two. Okay. The second step is knowing that every rag has a chalan or there are rules uh, when it comes to combination of notes. Mm -hmm. For Western music students, this is exactly the difference between the Western concept of scale or mode and the Indian concept of rag. Okay. When it comes to a scale or mode, you can have uh, the combination of any note with any note in the set. While in rag, you can't combine randomly. There are specific rules and at the same time, there are key phrases or uh, key combination of notes that one has to use, one cannot omit because these phrases or combination of musical notes give rag its identity. Now to take an example amazing, of amazing. the second step, let's take the uh, Sampurna Jati Rag of Yaman, which has, Yaman? because it is Sampurna, it has the seven notes. Okay. But instead of taking the original positioned ma, we are taking the variant of ma, which is tivra ma. So the Tibra set ma. sounds something like this. Sare ga ma pa dha ni sa, sa ni da pa ma ga re sa. Let me listen to that one more time. Th this is brilliant. This is beautiful. The set sounds something like this. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa. That sounds... I would say pretty much as a major scale upwards, but downwards. So downwards, let me check this. You know, I'm a musical nerd and, and I like to check this stuff. Can I play these notes? Are they even, you know, semitones or is there something more going on? The set sounds something like this. Mm -hmm. sounds like this sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga re sa okay so this is beautiful sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga re sa this is so beautiful. So the notes that she's singing here are B, then C sharp, D sharp, then an F, then an F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then B again. 
and descending the same notes. But I've noticed that she does some of these small glissandos on one note, for example. She's not singing just the B, she's singing ta ta. You know, she has this quick glissando that pulls her to B and it's just beautiful. Let, let's continue listening. I'm so in love with this. But when it comes to singing or elaborating rag Yaman, your teacher will tell you that Yaman does not really take the phrase Sare Ga. Instead, the phrase Nire Ga forms uh, the identity of Yaman. So instead of taking Sare Ga Ma Pa, okay. you take Nire Ga Ma Pa. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Okay, so this is this is what makes Indian music sound very unique because it's not just singing these notes that I've talked about. It's these short glissandos on almost every note that give it this distinctive, you know, just a specific color, specific okay. taste. Wow, and it's kind of nasally. Everything is happening here. It's very hard to describe for somebody that's not been studying this kind of music. All I can say, it sounds very beautiful. It's almost everything is happening here in this frontal mask place. So basically your tone is resonating, let's say, here. You can feel it here. I can really notice her almost tone going through her cheeks and a little bit to her nose. It's not squeaky. Don't get me wrong, it sounds beautiful, but it's definitely not that throaty, you know. Almost no pressure is coming from the throat, and that's a very healthy way of singing. One more such key phrase which gives Yaman its identity is the combination of the notes Pa and Re. So <laughs> it's something like this. Nire ga ma pa re sa. Ah, so if I got it at least a bit correctly, it's not just singing the notes, but it's these P. Re sounds that while you're singing it, the sound, let's say, p, in the nature of the sound, p, let's say, there is this kind of slide. And it helps you really achieve this kind of, let's say, fluid, I don't know, fluid feeling, I would say. Please correct me if I'm talking nonsense here, but this is just me trying to explain it to myself the best way that I know. So it's something like this. Something like this. So beautiful. <laughs> the third rule of Yaman is uh, probably that while you're um, ascending okay. and you're going beyond Pa, you're not supposed to take the note Pa. You're supposed to omit Pa. So you can't sing it in this manner. Okay. Wrong. Okay. It should be. So you're skipping. And while descending, of course, you can take all the seven notes. Okay. So That's Yaman. So This is That's Yaman. Amazing. Now this concept of chalan in the rag is very interesting. Chano. Because you know you can have two rags with the same set of notes, okay. but the chalan of each rag is different and that gives um, the flavor to the rag and distinguishes one rag from the other. What was channel again? I hope she's going to repeat. I, I already forget. For example, let's take the rags. Okay, l let me check. What was channel? Channel. I know she was talking about it, but man, my brain is so slow when it comes to new stuff. The second step is knowing that every rag has a chalan or there are rules uh, when it comes to okay. combination of notes. Combination of notes and phrasing, that's channel. But the chalan of each rag is different and that gives um, the flavor to the rag and distinguishes mm -hmm. one rag from the other. For example, let's take the rags, rag Marwa and rag Sohni. They have exactly the same notes, six notes in ascending and six in descending. Okay. But the chalan is different. The set of notes sounds something like this. Okay. 
cute. It sounds like she's going to sing a B major scale. But at some point she just slides somewhere. And that's what makes it, you know, a rock. Completely different. The set of notes sounds something like this. Okay, it's not a major scale. <laughs> I was completely off here. The the descending line starts like a major scale. But but this note I can't even play, and that's the beauty. Because it's not, you know, it's not just the semitone. There are these micro intervals here. There are basically quarter tones. That's the thing that gives it well the channel, the channel, channel, channel. The channel orb. Ah, I'm so bad at saying this. Saying this. So those quarter tones. But when you're singing Marwa. Your teacher will tell you to rest on Re and Dha more. Okay. So it sounds like this, Rag Marwa. Okay, as a vocal coach, I noticed one very interesting thing. It's the way her tongue is positioned. It's basically always just laying there. It's not going anywhere. You know, when you're singing opera, it goes a little bit back into your throat. It lays around as well, but it goes a little bit, you know, backwards. But here, it's almost like it's going over her lower teeth. No? She's really pushing it very slightly to the lower teeth. I, I think that even gives it a little bit of this, this color when she's singing. Because of the rest Beautiful. on Ray and her, you see how the rag got a very contemplative feeling. It's mm -hmm. as if a man is thinking about the meaning of life and thinking yeah, about very uh, meditative. deep philosophy. At the same time, with the same set of notes, you can create rag Sohani, which is a chanchal rag, which is a little restless rag, mm -hmm. which sounds something like this. Yeah. So when you listen to Rag Sony, you more... will never think of a man who is contemplating about life. Yeah, this one was Instead, more you will think of a, messed up, a person say. who is Struggling. a little zestful, a little bit angry, irritated mm -hmm. and is on his toes always. So that is how the challan is very important and it gives the flavor to every rag and makes the rags distinct even if they have the same notes. I just want to take a quick second and say, Anuja, this lesson is just brilliant. You're really easy to listen to. I just love the way you explain. You have a beautiful smile and I just love the way you structured this video. Thank you for this, but let's continue listening. So that is how the challan is very important and it gives the flavor to every rag. She's in love with what she's speaking about. Rags distinct, even if they have the same notes. She's really loving okay, what she's talking about. Okay, now that I know about uh, step one and step two, okay. let me try singing rag Yaman for you. I will sing the set of notes in Yaman, and uh, definitely I'll combine the notes using the rules of the rag. Okay, okay rag Yaman. Nirega. Gare sa ni re ga ma pa re sa. Okay, so five notes. Gama dhani dha pa. Gama dhani sa ni dha pa ma gare sa. I got lost. Is it eight notes or? But still, it didn't sound like rag yaman. Why? I had the same set of notes. I used the rules of combining. But why didn't it sound like Rag Yaman? Because there weren't those well, slides. Well, at this point, the third step is very important. I think. A Rag is not complete without the use of specific ornamentation in the Rag. In classical singing, in the singing of Rag, um, the ornamentation slides, the of Kanswar is very important. Kanswar. Now, the notes in um, a Rag are not taken plainly. Okay. They have Kana or the touch of other surrounding notes and that is what gives the beauty to the note now for example 
man, this is a whole philosophy, not just teaching, you know, music, not just teaching theory of Indian music, but this is like a way of Example, living. I will not sing um, Rag Yaman plainly. Okay. This becomes very plain, okay. but using the Kanaswar, it becomes <laughs> I love these Lissandos, these what little slides. I actually gave the touch of Ga to Re. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. so Amazing. So it's not just slides, but she's uh, using the note that she's sliding from. I know that this is kind of sacrilegious, but let's just try to explain it in a, you know, Western kind of musical understanding. So let's say you have notes, Do, Re, Mi. I'm going to sing it in creation. So, Do, Re, Mi. You're not going to slide like, Do, Re. But you're going to sing something like, Do, Re, Mi, Re. I actually gave the touch of Ga to Re. Ni, Ga, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa. So this is the thing that I was missing in the understanding of rock. It's not just sliding from one note to another, but it's borrowing the way your, you know, the 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 note name and sliding with that note name to the other note name while doing, you know, a glissando, a short slide. And with the name of the note that you're pronouncing, that gives it this necessary tonal quality that just makes rock rock. So while I, I was singing per re, I was actually taking the notes in between also. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So these kanaswar or the shadow notes or the notes that you just touch, they are not pronounced. You just touch them mm -hmm. and say a high, a little bit high and come back. <laughs> so that is the That's intricacy the best way to of explain. singing a rag. The minute detailing, the micro notes used, that increases the beauty of rag and gives it its structure. Just like uh, how the human body is made up of layers, like the layer of uh, Water. bones, layer of muscles and tissues, and then the layer of skin, and then only it becomes a human body. Similarly, a rag is also formed of three layers, as we saw, the layer of the set of notes, the then shana, to add on shana, it, the layer of chalan, chana, and chana. the layer of ornaments. These elements together, combined together, interacting with each other will give you a rag. I hope this episode was informative enough and all the doubts that you had regarding the Anuja. concept of rag have been clarified. Well, if you found this episode interesting, then please do like the video, share the video and subscribe to my channel. Make sure That's I will. That's all for today's episode. I will love to see you in my coming episode. I already Still liked then, it. Take care and peace be with you. <laughs> so this was so informative. So this was probably the best video that I'm going to ever watch about Rag. Just the way she explained it, it was very natural to her. You can really understand that she really loves what she's doing. And I love the description in her about section of her YouTube channel. The channel aims at introducing the viewers to the world of Indian music. Content creation by Anuja Kamat. Update, hello everyone, this channel is currently non-functional, inactive, as I am taking further education in music. Thank you, Anuja. And I just love the way that she's continuing learning and that she will bring more videos like this to us. Maybe I react to some other video like this because this one was really informative. I really learned a lot about Ra from just this one video and she explained it beautifully. I think this is just wonderful, at least for me as a foreigner who doesn't understand it clearly. And I will need to rewatch it, you know, at least 10 more times to really understand every single name of the rag, every single note name. But even like this, I can appreciate it way more. And I just love it. Thank you for doing this video. If you do more, I will love it so much. I subscribe to your channel and I advise everybody to do so as well. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something new as well. If you enjoyed what you saw, like and share it around with your friends and consider subscribing for more similar videos. If you want to support the making of these videos, consider treating me to a cup of coffee with a link in the description. Think about it. Coffees aren't that expensive, but every single thing adds up in the end and it helps me make better and better videos for you guys. It just helps me do this constantly. It helps me deliver videos that you would like to see the most, but it also helps me just grow as a person, learn more stuff and just make better, you know, knowledgeable videos for you. If you want to see these videos before anybody else and also get entitled to some cool perks check out my patreon page because that's where everything is happening and what can i say this video is so important to me i always like learning new stuff about music from everywhere and indian music is just tasteful you know it's just so unique 
it relaxes me in such a way that I just can't explain. It's really meditative at times. It can also be kind of restless, but, but I really enjoy these rocks that are kind of peaceful and just meditative because it just rests my soul. And what can I say? You look wonderful, people. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.